Good morning, everyone. It's Casing Tuesday, and I'm so glad that you're here with me this morning. Um, I'm going to wait for a few of you to get on live. And if you're watching this as a recording later, I'm glad that you're watching it after the fact. And if you want to leave me a comment or um, just let me know if you uh, like my card, give it a thumbs up. I would have really appreciate that. Um, so uh, Casing Tuesday is when we take a card out of a current Stampin' Up! catalog and we give it a makeover. And it's kind of a fun little exercise to do and you can join us um, doing it. You can uh, join our Facebook group. If you look down below in the description of this video, you'll probably have to click on see more because it only shows you like one sentence. Um, but down below there is a link to our group and you can see all the different versions of the card that we made. And I love today's layout because it's got a lot of layers and I generally do better with cards that have a lot of layers. Good morning, everyone who's joined me this morning. If you follow me regularly, you might notice my hair is a little shorter. I um, I chopped my hair <laughs> myself, which um, I am, maybe I'm just like such a scaredy cat, but I have not gone to, um, to a uh, place to get my hair cut for like a year, over a year, because uh, I probably didn't get it done like the when I first started uh, um, uh, not going out in public very much. So yeah, I um, I have this, uh, I've done it twice. This is the second time I've cut my hair and I cut about like four inches off. It was getting really long and um, I, are, are you one of these people that, uh, you know, um, you probably don't like your hair. Like my hair is not bad, and and uh, certainly everyone has their challenges. But everyone like looks at like I have straight hair, and I look at the curly haired people and go, oh, I wish I had body in my hair. But my hair is really straight. But one of the good things about having straight hair, I have found, uh, is that it's really easy, not easy, but easier to cut by yourself. Because if I had short hair, it would be hard. If I had curly hair, it would be hard. But straight hair, there's like these video tutorials on how to cut it. And it's like pretty, pretty easy. So I just like chopped off four inches and uh it's a lot better now like the um ends are are better and I'm, it's not all tangly when i go to brush it out so i'm much much happier and now i'll probably let it grow again until it gets super long and you'll watch the progression in my videos each week and uh then i'll be like rapunzel and i'll be like okay i need to chop it off now and <laughs> Anyway, okay, now that I've got some of you here, good morning, everyone. I will talk to you all after I have um, completed my card, and that way um, uh, we can have a better progression in the video. So um, today's card has a lot of layers, as I said, and let's have a, a little peek at it. Um, here it is, and I think the size of this card may have originally been like a note card size. Um, so I did actually make this in a, a full size card, and this is a beautiful um, bundle that we have in the catalog. I don't have it yet, but I like the colors and I liked, you know, how it came together. So here are the. Oops, here are the measurements for for the card approximately just so you can get an idea of um, what the layers will be like of course you can change them and I really did I, I changed mine a little bit just to make it um, work with my images and everything like that so use this as a guide and um, sometimes what I do is I will cut all of those layers and then I will have a look, especially at the focal point layer. Like, um, so to me in this card, if you look at it, the focal point is the cact cactus or the cacti cactus cactus is the um is the focal point so when i go to design the card i look for something that will fit in that circle like an image that will fit in that circle and then i uh, build everything else around that 
Um, and that background paper, you know, is also really like if you have a certain background paper that you use, that would be probably my next thing that I would pick. Um, um, because when you're picking the paper, that also kind of helps determine how you're going to color things. So, all right, let me show you my card. And I think I've got everything going here. Let's pop over to my other camera. Here's my card. I love this card. I Sometimes when I finish making my card, I'm like, okay, it's okay. And today I really love this card. And I think I love it um, because I do love hummingbirds. Um, my dad um, used to feed the hummingbirds where we lived in, in Kelowna. Um, and he had it like, um, probably, I think he maybe had more than one hummingbird feeder. And um, the little guys, they would come and to our feeder and he enjoyed photographing them. So, you know, it's kind of sentimental um, after losing my father last year. So this just kind of speaks to my heart. And I want to show you especially how I colored this little guy because it might not be quite what you think. Um, but I think it's a fabulous way to color it. And I, I think you'll enjoy how I, I did that. Um, so and the other piece I use right here is the um this is called many medallions dies and i just cut um this big piece here and i cut it down so that it's a square but i think it makes a fabulous background an alternative to using designer series paper which i could have used like maybe a piece of designer series paper back there too which would have been nice but that that's kind of the medallion is has interest in it but it's also a neutral background it doesn't um, overpower but it I think it enhances the image and everything um, and then of course I'm using a touch of ink and this is a celebration reward stamp set so this one can only be earned with a purchase um, so if you spend a hundred dollars you can choose this stamp set um, until the end of February 2021 as your choice and um, of course the images on here are, are really small the actual size right here is right here um, but just to point out we have an outline image and then we have a filler image so these two images come together to make the hummingbird or you could stamp th this little guy and color him with coloring tools as well but I really like that we have this image and it makes it a lot faster to get that color on there so if you're making a lot of cards it is a lot quicker if you have a two-step stamp all right I think I've done enough talking so let's build our our card and we're going to start off with um, this focal point layer and so for that, I'm using the layering circles dies. These are, you know, kind of a real staple if you're stamping uh, to have these circles because they've got both the scallops and the smooth and you can use them together or separately. But circles are kind of one of those things that's very hard to hand cut. So uh, you always want to have, um, you want to you want to get a set of circles for sure. And um, this, this set is really great. So I cut the largest smooth circle and then I'm going to take some Memento ink and I'm going to take my little hummingbird outline and we're going to ink this guy up. I slightly twist as I'm inking up just with um, this pad, not with our other pads because this one has a linen top. So you might notice me twisting a little bit and I will not do that with the foam ones. Um, but this one, um, if you twist a little bit, it helps um, ink up this little guy. So I want to stamp, I'm going to stand so I can get a bird's eye view real quick. And I want to stamp it like close to the edge, like the beak and that top of the wing. I want them pretty close to the edge. Okay, and lift off. And then set this aside for a moment. Now I'm going to show you my little trick on how to color this. So this is the outline, or not the filler. And I'm going to use funny because I use pear pizzazz back here but I, I'm gonna use uh, granny apple green here I know it's just another green I could have used pear pizzazz but 
um, Granny Apple Green is a very bright green and I wanted that green to pop off the page. And I'm going to use also Poppy Parade. So I'm going to use two colors to create the hummingbird. We'll start off with the Granny Apple Green because it's the lighter of the two colors. And I'm going to um, use a sponge dauber. I have designated a sponge dauber and I, I made a little label for it and I taped it onto my sponge dauber. So I only use this one in granny apple green. That way I don't muddy my, my inks. So I'm just going to get this nice and inky and I'm going to sponge all the way. I'm going to do the tail, the wing, the top of the head. I'm going to leave the belly blank. And this little section right here underneath the throat, which is already stained with Poppy Parade Red, tends to stain your stamp. So it's permanently got some uh, kind of red etching on there. So that's so this belly and throat area I'm going to avoid. So I'm just going to really get this really inky with my sponge dauber. And that's going to create the, um, the green part, the vivid green part of my image and then I'll come in with Poppy Parade and just do this little tiny throat area. Okay so then um, I'm going to just move these out of the way just so we don't have so much stuff on the desk and you can kind of focus in on what I'm doing. So now I'm going to reactivate the ink by using my hot breath on it. I know that sounds really, really gross. Uh, someone used to call it uh, Darth Vadering it, like huffing on, on the stamp. But you want to use your hot, moist air and you're going to breathe on there. So this is not a good um, activity to do with a group of people right now. Uh, uh, this is a good one to do in your isolated craft room away from people. So I'm just going to do that. So you can see how it kind of steams up. All right, so then you're going to just hover over top of your area that reactivated the ink. And then I'm gonna come down and add that to my hummingbird. And there it is, it's all colored. So when I use this again, I will probably go ahead and clean this in between with my chamois. Um, you could probably just kind of follow the outline again. Um, I just want to try not to muddy up my um, sponge daubers. So that's why I tend to clean in between each time. But if you're careful, you probably won't get too much of the other ink on your sponge dauber. Okay, so look at that. Didn't that do like a fabulous job of coloring it really quickly? So then I'm going to take a scrap piece of paper and I want to add some sky into the background. So I'm going to take my um, sponge dauber that I only use in pool party and use my pool party ink pad. And we're going to um, add some blue sky. So what I'll do is I'm going to get this inky and daub off at least once. And then I'm going to start lightly with small circles just on the white part. Okay, so you can kind of see it coming together. And I'm just filling in the white area. And this pool party is a pretty light color, so you can get really close to the, the bird and it's not going to, um, it's not going to affect the bird. Just a nice way to bring sky. And it's gonna help pop this bird too. And when you sponge dauber, it kind of creates uh, light and dark areas. So it's like not completely uniform. So it, it does kind of look artistic as well. Okay, so let me lift this off. And you can see how pretty that sky is. It's got some variation, some darker, some lighter, and it just looks really pretty. Okay, 
Let's do the next part. So now let's um, stamp this best wishes and I'm going to take a piece of basic white cardstock. This measures three and a half by three quarters of an inch. I'll take my memento again and I'm going to just grab my best wishes stamp and this is also in that stamp set. It has best wishes and I'm going to stamp this centered on here. Okay, I didn't do a great job stamping that, so we'll just do it again. That's, you know, it's always easier to stamp standing up. Okay, I did a better job this time. And then I'm going to grab my a piece of Poppy Parade, going back to the color of the Ruby Throat. Um, this one measures four inches by an inch. And I'm going to grab paper snips. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this and give it a little cut. So let's see, did I get it about the same length? Yeah, it's about the same same distance as before and then I'm going to use that cut right there to kind of um, do the same same angle and then I'm going to do the same angle over on this side and to kind of create this little label oh shoot Look, I just, I smudged that. All right, I'm gonna be more careful. Let's do this one more time. I don't really wanna glue that if it's smudged. Let's do it one more time. All right. I think this needs to dry a little bit. Let me do this. I'm going to avoid going over the inked area. Okay, get rid of this. Bye bye, it is smudged. I just happened to cut an extra layer today for some reason. I don't know, I just had a bad feeling that I was going to really mess that one up. Okay, so I'm getting all my layers prepped. Um, one more layer. So I already um, ran my piece through with the many medallion dies. This is a piece of pear pizzazz. It started out as uh, four and a quarter by five and a half and I just ran this through. And so now I wanna cut it down. I wanna make this um, a square. So I'm gonna start, I, I wanna cut, come over five and so I'm gonna just cut off this layer. So I'll start cutting here I'm just going to cut along here, straight along the edge, like this. And then like this. So this piece, you could um, cut this, I'm, I didn't use this piece, but you could cut this down. and cut this side off right and now you have an extra piece to use on a different card or you could use it on the inside if you wanted to. All right so now back to this piece I've got this weird set of brackets over on this side I want to get rid of that because I want to create a perfect square so let me go ahead and come through and just cut these pieces off and now I've got a square and so then I've got these little, you can kind of see this on the edge, you've kind of got little triangles sticking out and I don't want to cut off too much but I want to just kind of blunt the tips because I really do want this to be a square. I don't want anything weird sticking out. So I'm just going to trim that. And now we have this perfect square and I've got little tiny green pieces. Let me get those out of the way. All right, so we're we're building our piece and our card. And now let's have a look at our card base. This is a piece of mossy meadow cardstock. 
and it started off as an 11 inch by four and a quarter inch piece and then it was scored in half at the five and a half inch mark. Some people fold it in half. I always score. You can fold it in half if you want to, um, but I'll always score mine in half because I like that nice crisp line. So, okay. So back here, I've got, you probably can't even see this, but in person you would, and that's just one little detail. I've added some leaves to the top and the bottom, which there's another stamp for, right? We've got so many stamps in the A Touch of Ink stamp set to use, and it's got a butterfly too. So it's got a lot of images we can use. So I'm gonna use Mossy Meadow. Stamping Mossy Meadow on Mossy Meadow will create a nice shadowed image. Okay, and then I'll just stamp this right close to the top. Okay, ink it up again. And we're gonna stamp it close to the bottom. Okay, and this will fade just a little bit because it's still wet, it's gonna be, but it really doesn't matter because it looks fabulous anyway. And then I'm going to take some Tombow and we're going to add this here. And just before I glue it down, same distance from top to bottom and it's going to be over here on the left side. So there's going to be a little bit of a gap here which will give it the feel of the original card. So I'll just grab some Tombow. I'm going to put Tombow on the four corners. And then I'm going to put a dot of Tombow in each of the centers of this medallion piece. Dot, 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 dot. Okay. And then I'm going to line this up with my side right here. Okay. And then just press that down. So pretty. Okay, now here's my little trick to help you. So um, I want to see those three little dots are gonna peek out here, 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 and here. So that's how I'm gonna align it. Oops, stay down. <laughs> it will stick down once it dries. Ooh. Okay, this happened to me last time I was doing a video and I apologize for that, but for some reason, and I don't know if I can turn that off, I may need to investigate that. My um, cell phone also rings on my laptop, so that's kind of annoying. But uh, I just unaccepted that call. So I want to turn this so I have enough room to put the labels. And then I want to make sure I see the three dots here, 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 and here, just kind of peeking out. And that's kind of where I'll know where to put this. And that still allows a lot of this lattice work to peek out. And then for this one, my little trick is I wanna see the three dots underneath each of these. So I'll grab this piece. I love how that poppy parade comes back in, you know, and the color just, um, you know, just brings back the little red right there. That just looks pretty. And then I've got my best wishes. Add a little Tombow to the back of there. And then we'll just add this probably about here. Make sure it's it's not crooked. And then the last little thing I wanted to add is this little bow and it's pool party and it's sheer. So it goes back to the sky, but it doesn't like take away from the hummingbird, right? It's there, but it's not like overtaking the whole card. It's just subtly there. So earlier I tied a little bow with the pool party sheer ribbon. Um, I don't know if this ribbon has been overlooked in the catalog, but I love it. Pool party is like one of the best blue colors like for sky and 
and and working with other colors it plays really nicely so this sheer ribbon is just fabulous and I'll just use a little mini glue dot and just add it to the back of my bow and then I'll come here and I'll just have that kind of anchor right in the corner it just kind of anchors everything in and it doesn't you know it doesn't overtake the card right it's just kind of a subtle subtle tribute so there are the two cards slightly different each one you know because you're gonna sponge a little bit differently on both of them but both of them are cute so if you want to finish off the inside of the card um, what I did is I decided I would just um, I would kind of mimic the square image here and so I cut myself a four inch by four inch square and you can probably see I did the same stamping behind as I did on the front and then I used another image Let me grab my little stamp set this little floral image and um, this filler image and I actually stamped this um, image here in mossy meadow but I think next time what I would do is um, I would um, uh, do that in tuxedo black I like the black a little better and then I stamped right on there with poppy parade I didn't do any sponge jobbering I just um, but I double stamped it so I stamped it once didn't ink it up again and I stamped it a second time so it was two you can probably see this is two different intensities of red so I stamped it once and twisted it a little bit and then stamped it again over top of the um, original image but always with this uh, particular stamp set uh, stamp the outline image first and then the second filler image um, second so that kind of will create like a nice kind of um, uh, inside for your card that kind of matches the outside if you want to do that so what do you think do you like the little hummingbird card do you like that um, little trick with the sponge darbering and coloring you can do the same thing for the butterfly as well um, one little trick that I use when I'm coloring um, an animal or like a bird or I go to Google and I search like say I'm coloring a kangaroo I go to Google and I search kangaroo and I click on images kangaroo images and I look at kangaroo images and that helps me pick colors and it helps me decide like where did the ruby throat go why did I leave the belly blank because typically ruby throats have um, uh, like no coloring on their little bellies so that really helped me just decide the colorings I I could not just pull those colors out of my head so I need that that help because and I think most of us do so that's how I, I decide how to color things all right I'm going to go look at your comments good morning Connie and Beverly and Elizabeth oh my gosh Elizabeth it's 2 a.m. I don't know how you're even up. I I am such a morning person. That's why I do my lives in the morning because I whenever I do a live in the afternoon or night, I I'm just I don't have energy. I so mornings is my time. I don't know how you're even up. I I hope you can go back to sleep. Is all I'm saying. Good morning, Janine. Oh, and thank you for uh, that you like my hair. I know it's it's a little shorter. It's a little shorter I my mom finally watched one of my videos the other day and my mom thinks I would look really cute with short hair and um, this this is a, a funny story when I was in third grade my mom cut my hair short I looked like a little boy in my opinion looking back I looked like a little boy and ever since then I have never wanted my hair cut short because back then back in those days you didn't ask your little kids, how do you want your hair? It was like, if your parents wanted your hair short, it was short, you know, like that was it. And so <laughs> it 
always tell her I was traumatized. So the funny thing was, I was talking to her I, a couple of nights ago, and she said, oh yeah, I watched your video. And she goes, Brenda, I actually think I really like your long hair. It looks really pretty. And I'm like, well, guess what, mom? I just cut off four inches. So that was the next day. And I'm like, I, I just cut it off. And she goes, oh, well, it'll probably still look okay. So it's funny how we have these things, you know, she cut my hair short and now I like to always wear it long and okay. Too much information, right? Um, uh, good morning, Karen. Um, good morning, Amy. She says it's super cold. Um, she's hoping for 25 degrees. That must mean it's um, colder than that. Ugh. It, it's been not so, so I, okay, I, I admit I still go by Celsius. So in the morning, like it, um, right now it's minus two Celsius and where we are at. And I don't know, let me change it to Fahrenheit. That would mean uh, it's 28 degrees here. So it's not that warm here either. Um, but I, I work better in Celsius. That's what I grew up with. So I have to always convert. Because if I say to you, oh, it's minus two, you're like, oh my God, that's really cold. But it's not because that's Celsius, right? Okay. Good morning, Alice from Indiana. And thank you for sharing my video. That's so sweet. Um, I heard the other day, like if you do like my videos, I, I would really appreciate if, if you gave me a thumbs up because um, that helps other people see me. It's a very simple thing you can do. Now this, for you on Facebook, um, I, I guess you could like my video, but on YouTube, if you're watching it later, um, I would really appreciate that because that that helps other people see me. And I it's a simple thing and I never tell people to do that. So um, oh, and thank you for the thumb that was flying in the air. That was really funny. Um, Karen said, you've made coloring the hummingbird look so easy. I can't wait to play with my set now. Thank you. Well, I hope I hope that works and try it with the butterfly too. Go Google uh, butterfly images um, and then kind of do a similar coloring uh, with that as well. And uh, um, hopefully I'll get some good results. Good morning, Donna. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. I'm glad you like my cards. Janine says she loves the design. The whole card is lovely. Thank you. I, you know, that's what I was saying this morning. Sometimes I, when I finish my card, I'm like, okay, that's an okay card. And some days I'm like, oh, I really like my card today. And today I actually do really like my card. Good morning, D. Elizabeth said she's just about to go to bed. Couldn't sleep. I know. I, I think um, I'm, I've been having sleep issues too. Um, I wake up in the middle of the night and I, I think I'm, I think I need to get some darker curtains for my room because they let in all the light. And right now, because all the snow uh, on the ground, it just reflects so much of any light that's outside. And so I'm, I think I need to have a darker room. So I'm, I'm going to investigate that, see if I can get some blackout curtains or something like that. We'll see. Um, ooh, Alice says it's cold there, 18. That is cold. And Dee says she loves my new haircut. Thank you. It was very cheap. <laughs> I didn't even give myself a tip. So that's kind of funny, right? All right. Well, if you need any supplies I talked about today, remember... You can get this for free if you place a hundred dollar order and this has like a lot of stamps in it so it's a kind of a fun one to choose you can see the the stamps in here they're actually quite large images it's a really pretty set to have um and celebration ends at the end of february I'm just going to see if there's any other things I need to tell you about. Um, and if you place your order with me, you get some nice perks. You can choose one of my tutorials for free. And you'll also, if you spend at least $75 with me, you'll also get um, my little reward that I send out each month. So, um, and I always appreciate your orders. All right, guys, I hope you have a great week. I will be back here on Friday, or I'll be on YouTube on Friday doing a YouTube Live at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I hope you'll join me then. On Fridays, I either do like a 3D project or I do a fancy full card. So something a little bit 
um, uh, crazier, more fun, uh, something usually kind of original. So um, I have no idea what I'm going to do yet, um, but I will figure that out and I will be on there on Friday. All right, guys, have a great week and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.